what the East African is holding this week. It says that uh, with Kenya blocking dairy exports by Kenyatta Farm and Algeria deal in limbo, Uganda leader now woos Senegal as prices drop 73% from as cry foul. If you may just have it in full there, this story continues on page 4 and 5 of uh, the East African this week. And we can see him here. This is the president, Makisal, sampling Ugandan milk brands at State House in Tebe on July 19, 2023. As he hosts President Yoram Seveni, looks on. President Sal was in the country on a two-day visit, promised to facilitate access of Uganda's dairy products to the West African nation. That is a story that you can follow on page four and five. These milk wars have been going on for a while. Remember Peter Kagwanja as well. We had other brands from Uganda uh, for a short while. They were doing well in the markets, uh, coming at a cheaper price. But uh, because of the milk wars as well, they were rounded off or they were rounded up and uh, now they're no more. Back to Uganda, back to now the new market in West Africa. I think the, <clears throat> the opening up of Africa uh, in terms of the, the borders and all is, is producing very complex dynamics than, just, than simply uh, say, they, remember the intra-African trade is the weakest in the world today, less than 15% mm -hmm. uh, between Africa. So I wouldn't see the expansion of Uganda into West Africa as a, as a way as a threat to Kenya or vice versa. I would want to see it as part of the expansion of intra-African trade. If you compare that with Europe, uh, to Europe largely trades with itself and, and with America to, to an extent. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think what, what, what we need to see is more African trade uh, between, I mean, uh, trade between African countries. But, but that said, of course, one of the mysteries that, uh, you know, is amazing is why things are cheap in Uganda. Mm -hmm. I'm told the people in Busia they should have their, uh, their breakfast from the Ugandan side because the milk is cheaper, the bread is cheaper, and sugar is affordable. On the Kenyan side, it's very expensive. Uh, so I have never understood that, uh, you know, now people in uh, Roitoktok and related border, Taveta and related border mm -hmm. towns mm -hmm. are, are consuming their fuel from Tanzania. Uh, you know, and uh, if you're in Busia, you would rather uh, you know, put your fuel border border from the Ugandan side. How fuel is cheaper in Uganda and has to pass through Kenyan countries. I, I, mean, I, I, mean, I mean, I'm not an economist. It doesn't make any but, sense. But I have never seen why it does make Do you know that um, almost all animal feeds, uh, you know, are coming from Uganda? Mm -hmm. And uh, so when I went to, uh, you know, uh, China, in Changsha, mm -hmm. uh, last week, but one, uh, I found the stall uh, you know, where coffee is being exported from Africa. And this is a Kenyan uh, entrepreneur who is having a stall, uh, you know, for demonstration of the quality of Arabica and other coffees. And he's, uh, he's basically on the Ugandan side because he's exporting coffee from Uganda. Mm -hmm. But he, he's, he, he's uh, I think, he's a resident of Uganda or something. Um, so th there is a lot of into mixing so with the milk I, I think kenya yeah kenya has a, a lot of milk but again co prices might also be an issue an issue yeah and there's no justification for that no, no I have, i've never understood why yeah. oil could would come from uh, indian ocean all the way to uganda and it is cheaper than what we are having in mombasa i'll tell you all right Let's say from uh, Dr. Moses, I, I know also you like milk, milk as well. But you remember in this country there was a milk glut because there was a lack of uh, storage of, uh, you know, I think coolants so that uh, they can actually be stored. And we could see on television people were actually wedding in milk. Yeah. Plenty of milk, but still the prices are not really going down even when there is a glut. Yeah. Um, maybe let me join in by concurring with uh, Professor Kagwanja first in terms of um, um, intra-Africa trade. Mm -hmm. It still stands um, at around 11%, which is very, very low. Mm -hmm. So for Uganda to uh, venture into other areas like West Africa is encouraging because that's where 
Africa should be going, where we open up markets and start trading with each other. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to why commodities are expensive in Kenya, uh, one uh, would look at uh, um, a greedy uh, state officials uh, who would like to tax almost everything that exists. Mm -hmm. Now, we need to move away from that, um, whereby we produce goods that are affordable for our people. Mm -hmm. uh, because security is not only in terms of armory and uh, protection of borders, but security is now looked at in terms of human security, food security. Yeah. How do you make goods affordable for your people? Because if you have a healthy nation and a, a, a nation that can afford goods, then that is a secure nation. Mm -hmm. So it is imperative that uh, uh, states in Africa, especially Kenya, start reducing the tax burden on commodities mm -hmm. to make them affordable. Indeed, indeed. Yes. And uh, Dr. Kongwaje, you can see in, uh, not Kagwanza, but uh, Dr. Hassan Kanenje, you can see in Nigeria, you have a country that is well endowed with oil, but still fuel prices are high. And when we had uh, the new president coming in and pulling out the subsidy, there's a, food, there's a food crisis and it calls for a state emergency. Don't you find it to, to be a bit of an oxymoron? <laughs> How do you know I was going to use that word? Oh, uh, you were just about to use it? Yes, I was just about to use it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, yes. Um, I think that is the irony of African economics. Um, one thing is, with regard now to energy that you're mentioning and some other commodities, uh, we don't add value. 60% of uh, cocoa comes from the Ivory Coast, and then a chunk of it from Ghana, but you can barely afford chocolate in those countries. Nigeria is one of the largest oil producing countries in the world, uh, and certainly on this continent, but I think Nigeria has more black holes than any other country on the continent. Uh, virtually everybody has a, a generator in Nigeria. And many of them, when they visit uh, you know, Kenya, they are shocked that uh, you can have power on the whole day and then wake up tomorrow, then you still have power. You know? mm -hmm. um, now, I think c coming back to the question of prices you know, here, uh, part of, one of it has to do with economics uh, or the purchasing power, uh, where y you, know, you may not be able to make a lot of profit uh, because the cost of renting the property or a shop may be just a bit higher. And so that sometimes is translated into the prices to the consumer. Mm -hmm. uh, but fundamentally, uh, we've also not invested in, you know, uh, sufficiently in ensuring that we, uh, we, we produce, we become uh, self-sufficient mm -hmm. uh, with regard to food and, and other things. We've watched as other countries, including neighbors, actually beat us to a game. Mm. Right now, the sugar is pretty much, you know, more or less, you know, collapsed. And we're importing a lot more than I think any time, you know, is it history. And to agree with the point that Moses just raised, we also have an appetite of trying to tax everything. Yes. Yeah. I think soon we're going to be taxing air, you know, so mm. that uh, just for you to wake up, we need to pay some taxes for it. And that has an impact, of course, on the price. Mm -hmm. um, now, that in relation to other uh, uh, costs that are significantly higher of other things, mm -hmm. not just you know, the, the, the taxes, uh, they conspire to actually increase the ultimate price to the consumer. Mm -hmm. you know. Now, what that does is denies the consumer to the ability uh, to do other things, even to pay more taxes, mm -hmm. because what they have to, to use is very little that's, that remains with them. And in the macroeconomic perspective, ultimately the country is going to collect less taxes. It's going to have less money because the people are having less capacity to be able to, to do that. Now, with regard to the reason, uh, what you just mentioned, that uh, we decided we don't want Ugandan milk for political reasons, I think that's just a, ca a case of Kenya being extremely petty and childish. Uh, the moment we personalize, uh, you know, regional business uh, in, in, an, in an environment where Kenya is a leader 
and is a big proponent of regional integration, it does not make us look good, mm -hmm. it makes us look worse. And the people who are going to suffer are mostly our citizens who have who had been afforded uh, cheaper products from neighboring countries. What we should be doing, it is not to personalize it, it is to frame it in a way that also benefits. If we think perhaps that kind of engagement was not benefiting the country sufficiently, how can we have mechanisms mm -hmm. that can benefit the country at large? Right. I think your mic has just dropped. I'll try and fix it. As uh, Hamid Ashi just contributed uh, on that particular, as we wind up on the issue of uh, the prices and how they're skyrocketing, briefly. Of course, <coughs> the ball. Um, there is no um, framework for exchange in East Africa because of corruption. Um, so there's a problem of pr uh, price imbalance. For example, uh, say there's a 50 shilling packet of um, sugar in town and then suddenly someone buys a whole ship of sugar in the middle of the ocean through fax or telefax. Mm -hmm. Then it's dumped here, it's uh, sold at what, 30 shillings. The last guy who was given that uh, contract at 50 shillings loses all his sugar or he has to store it, it gets aflatoxin and then it is resold again to the market. So the, the problem is regulation. The problem is the state. Mm -hmm. The problem is not the free, the, the market. Anybody in the market is going to try and get what he wants uh, to make sure that he makes a buck. But if the government is in the business of making money, that's corruption. Um, if the, go the government is in the business of governing, so it shouldn't be in the business of making money with its citizens in the government. shouldn't be. Uh, I'm a big uh, fan for uh, just, uh, free enterprise. But we all know that there's no such thing as free enterprise because there's nothing that has ever been free. So, Debal, I think that uh, the three major structures of our economy are simple. Uh, integration, integration, integration.